Welcome everyone to Asian Pacific Voices Radio, where you'll find stimulating conversations that explore diverse topics and stories impacting our Asian Pacific American communities. I'm your host, Arnold Chun. My guest joining me today is a trailblazing Thai American film director and animator known for her remarkable contributions to some of Disney's most iconic animated films, including Frozen, Moana, Zootopia, and her role as the head of story on Raya and the Last Dragon. Hailing from Thailand, her journey in the animation industry reflects a unique blend of cultural influences, embodying a fusion of creativity and cultural insight that continues to captivate audiences globally. It's my pleasure to welcome Fawn Virasuntorn. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Such a pleasure to be here. So we are just excited to have you. Um, we'd love to hear just a little bit about your background and upbringing in Thailand and maybe some of the influences that really carried into your work. Sure. Um, I was born and raised in Chonburi, is uh, a seaside town about an hour outside of Bangkok. When I was in high school, I my parents sent me to you know high school in Bangkok, and that's when I really discover a much bigger, broader world. I started watching movie obsessively, and I always loved to draw. So that's when I start thinking about um, a career, you know, that combined a love of drawing and, and filmmaking. And that's kind of lead me to think about animation. And I grew up watching a lot of Disney films and also reading a lot of Japanese manga. As many people can <laughs> imagine, you know, it's 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 a dream that seemed very impossible. And when I told, tell anybody, they just kind of like, ah, <laughs> that's nice, um, but that's not gonna happen. And it really not until um, I was in high school, and um, Pai Tun Ratna Sirintar would he went to the same high school. He came back on vacation, and he was working at Disney Animation in Florida as an effects artist. And he came to talk to the students about what he does. And I was fascinated by that. I was like, wow, there, not only, you know, there are people working in animation and there was a, a Thai person working in the United States <laughs> doing what he loves. And that's really set me on the path of rethinking that maybe this could be possible for me also. You mentioned some of, uh, you know, Japanese manga and Disney. Any specific ones that you really, you know, watch over and over and <laughs> really kind of impacted you? We'd love to hear, like, which what, what are the titles, you know? Yeah. And um, when I was young, we, we have this VHS of Dumbo, right? And it was um, something that me and my siblings would watch over and over and over. I can recite that movie. And for me, what strike me as... <laughs> really amazing was that I don't I, I don't speak English you know I didn't speak English at the time and it didn't matter because everything on screen was so clear and later on I got a tied up version so I'm like oh finally I I, <laughs> I got more context of what's actually going on you know besides just thinking about what actually was going on and I, I fell in love with the medium then and then when I was a little older I went to see Beauty and the Beast in the theater and I just love the drawing styles of the Disney of the 90s of it all and I was old enough to copy that and 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 I love all of those musical films Beauty and the Beast Aladdin Lion King I really think that shaped me as an artist today got a lot of influence from that and at the same time I was also reading a ton of of manga uh Dragon Ball both yep. Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z Sailor Moon watched that on TV and I really love um Kon the detective Conan. I I live in um, you know in Burbank now, and I have um, Thai translation of of Conan the detective about a hundred of them that I keep bringing back from Thailand as a collection. I look at it the other wow. day. I was like, wow, that, <laughs> that's a journey there. <laughs> I mean, I was wondering, did you try as a child or, you know, when you're very young, like trying to, you know, draw Dumbo, drawing, draw those, you know, images that you saw on TV and did you keep them? Do you still have them like your old, you know, drawing when you were a kid? <laughs> I don't think I have any of them. I remember in elementary school, I would draw them and, you know, my friends love them. So I'm like, oh, I'll give it to you. And um, but um, a lot of people say, oh, that's a really nice hobby to have. You know, the love of drawing, that's good, being creative. And, and I just keep hearing the word hobby. So to me, I even didn't even 
wasn't able to take that seriously myself as something to pursue, not until I see someone who actually was doing it also. That's a great point that you hit on. Did you find your parents supportive when you wanted to decide to pursue a career in entertainment and specifically animation? What, was there any pushback? Was there support? Tell us about that. Oh, um, they were shocked <laughs> at the mention of that. Uh, and, and I should mention that when, you know, when that dream came about, I was about to graduate high school. So in my mind, I felt like that was very distant and the time has passed. I should have realized that sooner. Um, there was no college in Thailand I could go to. I would have to move. And the thought of doing all of that was very overwhelming. Um, so I went to university for something else completely different for a year. And it was a year of, uh, of suffering. <laughs> and I think it takes my parents seeing that you know, like me doing something I didn't have passion for and, and feeling very um, just kind of lost that, that they, it got them talking about it. If you were serious about it, you should, you know, really think about how you would make that happen. It's not something that, you know, my parents could make it happen. It would have to be up to me. And I'm really glad they did that because it was kind of like a crack open a door in a way, right? And and an invitation to kind of take a leap to do more than I thought I could. Because before that, I was someone, um, I was a kind of student that I was focusing on doing really well in school, right? And life was all about just doing well in school and then, and then it would be good. You're just kind of following the path that everyone leading, you know, laying there for you. And at that point, my parents were like, if you want to pick your own path, you got to, you know, jump in and, and and participate in that. It's not going to just happen out of nowhere. Do you have any family here? I know um, you obviously moved from Thailand to the United States, and I know that's got to, that had to have been a very, very difficult transition. Um, tell us a little bit about that first experience coming to the United States, um, how you got yourself set up, and do you, do you have any family here? Do you have any relatives that you really you know, uh, support I you? I did not have any family here. I did not know anybody. And the way I picked the schooling was I, I, I ordered all the catalogs from school in the United States. Um, and the school I ended up at was where Python went to school at. So one, you know, I just keep talking about uh, to everyone that representation, representation behind the camera is so important because that was really the point of convincing everyone I know who knows nobody in the industry, who knows nobody in the different country, that this was a, a tiny little hope that it could be possible, right? So I picked the same school because like parents, he went to that school, he got a job, maybe that can be me too. And, and Ohio seems very safe for my parents who, you know, anything we know about the U.S. was like from the movie. It was so crazy. So when I got there, I'm like, okay, well, I can read and write um, English really well. I can kind of understand from, you know, watching a bunch of movies, but I never really have to converse in, um, in another language before. So that was um, a little bit of a culture shock when I arrived at school. And luckily I could, uh, I was able to hide behind art because that was one thing I love about being an artist is that you draw and you present your work. And at the time I was just like, here's my work. And I would just stand silently <laughs> next to it until my instructor was like, you cannot do that. This is not just about drawing. This is about expressing who you are and you should be able to talk about why you do a certain thing to communicate, not just through visual. So that kind of opened up another avenue of me working up my, um, my courage and and finding my voice, which I found to be so important in, in what we do. And it's not just leaving up it up to, you know, people's interpretation or hiding behind it, that having a voice, having an opinion and finding the courage to express it is is key part of this. 
Yeah. On behalf of uh, the Asian Americans here in the U.S., I have to apologize to all the Thai people for all the portrayals of violence and destruction and chaos that the movies have shown that portray America as an unsafe place. <laughs> Sorry about all that. Uh, it's people of Thailand. America's not that all the time. We are safe. We have you know very nice, safe cities, and, and uh, we'd like to welcome you to come and continue to visit. And be a part of America. It's it's not that crazy. <laughs> that that is the thing, right? Because at the time, internet was starting to become uh, the thing that connects everyone together. So the perspective of different place, different kind of people, was very limited, and and media plays such a big role in in that. And that's why I think as a filmmaker, um, to tell a diverse story to give people a different avenue of getting to know one another in a way that it's not just first thought stereotypical thing that has been, you know, a big part of the media for so long. I think I could I start to see many different type of story and I'm very proud to be part of telling those stories. I want to go back to your previous point, which is very profound. Um, you talked about finding your voice, allowing your voice to influence the work and being uh, represented in the work. Specifically with the Disney projects, whether it was Frozen, Moana, or Zootopia, or, um, or you know, outside of that, Ryan the Last Dragon, was any one of those particularly more to uh, your heart in terms of speaking uh, and having an influence of you know telling your voice and having your voice being heard? Um, they all kind of played a role in in giving me um, confidence and, and access to the room, right? Of my twelve years at Disney. And I think it all um, culminate in my current uh, recent film, Wish, which I get to be um, one of the directors. And it's a story about a person coming to term with how big her wish is, how impossible it was, and what was the, the energy or the inspiration that keep a person going. Even though you know you will face many failures and heartache, but life is always worth uh, it. Life is always more fulfilling when you find that courage to go after what you want. So even though you know it, you're, you're saying like, oh, well, who, what is this Thai woman doing with a Disney film that celebrates 100 of years of Disney? And I'm like, well, there's a universality in the, in the concept of a wish, of a power of a wish. That's amazing. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Ryan the Last Dragon because obviously yeah. you were the head of story on that and obviously do, you wore a lot of different responsibilities. Some challenges that you faced uh, in bringing that to life, if you could share anything in that, we'd love to hear about that um, particular project. Yeah, Ryan and the Last Dragon was so special to me. I realized um, when, when I heard about the project going on at the studio, I wanted to jump in. I just want to be a part of this. And um, I did not realize at the time how 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 much it it would meant to me to be working on Raya, and be able to bring um, my culture on a big screen in a way that I have never seen before. And I got to collaborate with many wonderful people. Um, I want to sh give a shout out to Adele Lim and and Kui Gwen, you know my <laughs> Southeast Asian homies uh, and be able to be in the story room with those two and they're a very experienced um, writer and be able to tell uh, to see them just kind of bringing up the story of that, their childhood what was important to them and be able to connect on that in in the story room was something very new to me and um and i found that initially i thought people understand what southeast asian cultures <laughs> are and how we're all different and there's different pockets of you know countries and influences um and i found that not everyone understand that they kind of there's this thing of lumping east asia and southeast asia together as one identity um so that was something that i learned and at first i was kind of taken aback by it um and feeling a little upset by that. And then I thought that, well, here's my opportunity to, like, I am here, I got a seat at the table. I can help everyone understand what is beautiful about the culture, how different we are, but what bring us together. And, you know, I got to do a lot of research too, because not one person cannot represent the entire culture. It was just not possible. Um, so we have many um, different cultural cons consultants 
in different avenues. There's an archaeologist, architect, um, dancers, musicians that we get to um, come together and connect on, you know, what is the commonality of our cultures. I thought that was really beautiful. So specifically with Ryan the Last Dragon, I mean, that's incredible. And just Congratulations to you on, on that uh, accomplishment. Thank you. Um, obviously so many different people involved. And like you said, combining and trying to find parody with all the different cultures. What was the timeline in terms of how long did it take to, from start to finish to, to get that done? Um, I think I was on the film for about four years. Wow. Um, it was probably in development before that, but what happened was every film at Disney, right? The research is a really big part of it all. Um, so we got to take research trip uh, with the creative <laughs> leadership to different countries. And and at first they were like, well, you you grew up there. You probably know all of this. And I'm like, I, I, I do not. I've only known, you know, the pocket of of Thailand that I grew up in and, and, and I would love to learn more. Um, so on this trip, that's when I got to share, and I didn't even realize how much of a community oriented my, you know, my culture is. And being there, I was just going about my day like, oh yeah, this is just how it is. And then people were like, oh, so you, um, you share food all the time. There's no ordering, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah. And, you know, we sit down as a, as a family style and the way I address people, I call people brother or uncle or auntie, even though we're not related whatsoever, it's a way of respect. And it really get me to reflect on, on things I maybe have taken for granted because I was so used to them and to see it through the eyes of my coworkers and be able to, um, to share that. And that makes it into the film. This film is about how people have to learn to trust each other, even before they were ready. Right, and the power of community that can come together to create something wonderful. I think that was the main theme that, you know, I have never seen in another movie. At the end, it, sorry to spoil it, but there's a, the, the climax of that, we were quite proud because it's not so much of a, a hero's journey. It's a journey of a hero trusting someone else to be able to, um, to do something that out of character of that person. So Ryan, the last dragon, uh, you were mentioning it was taking, it took about four years of your participation on that project. Uh, we would love to hear more about, um, the different challenges that came, you know, with that, uh, collaborative process. Yeah. With every film I work on at Disney, it takes that long because we spent time initially testing out the stories. So it was, um, it was not that the script was written and then we draw it, we animate it and then it's done. Right. So there's a process from director, writer and story artists coming together and visualizing that version of the script. We also will screen it to um, people within the studio. They can give us feedback. Uh, and we do that about five to eight versions. Every film wow. go through that process. So wow. when you work on the first version of the film, you know that, oh, in a few years, it's going to be different, but you have to trust the process. It's going to be better. <laughs> so during that time, we work out the clarity, the, you know, all the jokes, all the emotional moment, if we know it's going to land or not, and, and everyone kind of jump in and give their thoughts. What point are you bringing in the actors that voice the characters in that process of making the film? Is it usually when you get the final version or is it in the very beginning so that you can hear them? Yeah, pretty early on, because once we know all, like who the characters are, we're very um, set on those, you know, we start casting and the actors and actresses, they bring their own take of the character. Kelly Marie Tran, once she joined the project as Raya, we start hearing her, we start hearing uh, the specificity of how she talks or if she pause and, you know, how she thinks, how she moves, and that will breathe it back into the storyboarding process, which then influence animation. So there's a lot of going back and forth and we don't just record her once and then we never see her again. You know, we bring her in every couple of months, every time we have something new or new discovery. And with every actor is a collaboration. Dan Daniel Day Kim, who is amazing 
we'll give a lot of thoughts about 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 Benja Raya's dad you know like the thinking behind that he'll ask questions and there's a lot of subtlety that he brings in that we're all like oh yeah of course <laughs> it's very Benja <laughs> yeah that's amazing so we definitely want to hear about uh, Wish obviously the first feature film you directed congratulations on an amazing accomplishment um, inspiration of the concept and development of that um, we'd love to hear um, anything you can share that you're allowed to share just about that entire journey and being that it was your first feature um, how that even got lined up for you to you know get that opportunity yeah so Wish started in 2018 and at the time Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee, who, you know, they made Frozen together, writer and director, they knew that in, in about five years, Disney will, will be celebrating 100th anniversary. And it was important to everyone at the studio that we celebrate this moment with an original film. So um, by the time I joined um, a few years in, I came from being head of story on Raya. I came to look at what uh, Chris has been doing because I got excited about that too. And the film was already about um, a young woman making a wish upon a star and the star falls down to earth, right? So I thought that was uh, an interesting take because it takes the legacy of the studio. A lot of the films, when you look back, there's a lot of characters wishing upon the star. They look out into the night nice sky when they look for hope. And then the actual star falls down was a fun idea that will bring a lot of entertainment. And for me, when I joined the project, I really appreciate getting to talk about what it means to to go after your dreams. Because for me, I'm like, oh, I lived it. It was really difficult. And I'm glad whatever inspired me to, to want to take a leap and do it. You know, I thank my uh, teenage fawn every day for having, <laughs> for somehow finding that, gather all the, you know, resources, convincing everybody and move to a different country to do it. And I understand that there's a lot of um, trial and error, but the, at the heart of it all is about, it's about keep trying the, the resiliency of it all, right? Of like, even though you face a failure, you can learn from it, you get back up and then you keep going. So that really influenced the character of Star. There's this cute character that doesn't talk in this film that fell down. And Asha, our main protagonist, trying to figure out like, why are you here? Are you here to help me? Do you grant wishes? And Star just didn't say anything. And what but what Star really does represent to me, to us, is that intuition that everybody has when they have this feeling that they want to do something. And there's a lot of fear and doubts, you know, that kind of brewing around in your mind. But what you need is a little bit of um a courage, someone to kind of push you into the the pool <laughs> while you didn't even know if you can swim or not if the water is too cold but you need that encouragement to start doing something and being active towards your dream um, so for me there were many people at that time right that were my star that gave me either challenges or a word of encouragement i lumped them all into helping because even people would say oh this this will never happen and the young fawn would be like well i will show you <laughs> <laughs> that one can figure out how to first uh, first step is to go to college for animation, even though people were like, that seems crazy. I'm like, well, I'm going to go do that uh, and uh, see if I can find a job. <laughs> That's amazing. So I've, I loved how you mentioned about, um, you know, what influenced the characters and their motivations and the kind of uh, universal sort of drives that you um, thought about and researched. How much of the cultural part of your background influenced any of those characters in Wish that you um, directed? Um, we have this fantastic character in Wish named Dahlia, and she's of East Asian descent, uh, and she's a person of, um, of disability community. And I thought that was something that we have never got to talk about before in film. Um, and I was just so proud of this character and her story that we tell. And she is... Um, someone who is full of, you know, spunk. <laughs> She's a really uh, person who you cannot get uh, your BS through her at all. She's Asha's best friend. She's a really awesome baker and she's full of hopes and dreams. And, and, and I, 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 I ache for her thinking that when she turns to 18, she has to give this all away to a king that control everyone's wish. 
Um, and we collaborate with Jennifer Kumiyama, who is excellent, excellent actor and singer in the role of Dahlia. So working on that was really fun and getting to hear her life story too. Because for me as a filmmaker, I realized with the something I learned from Raya is that even if you're from the culture, you, it's impossible for you to know everything. So it's so it's so vital that you re reach out, you ask questions, you know, you keep your mind open. So get rid of the fear of telling a story that that have never been told before. Yeah, great, great, great point. Uh, Going to ask you a really fun question from yeah. the Disney characters uh, in all the <laughs> Disney films. If any of them could join you in a real life adventure, who would you take? And what would you guys do? What kind of what kind of adventure or journey would you go on? <laughs> I would take Star from Wish. Um, when I was young, I have this idea of traveling by myself, and you know, I did that a little bit, and I found that I was not very good at uh, being on my own and, and getting to know new people. Felt a little bit of uh, <laughs> anxiety, and I feel like Star would be a really great, you know person being to take on the trip with, I think Star will encourage me to do things outside of my comfort zone and 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 getting to learn people's story, talk to strangers the way that me by myself might not <laughs> feeling up for it. <laughs> well said, well said. Well, all of our listeners, I mean, we'd love to learn more about you, be able to follow you. Uh, be able to connect with you. So please, we'd love to know, is there a website, social media handle you'd like to share with our listeners so they can learn more about uh, you and what you do? Sure, I am on Instagram and my handle is Fawn V, F-A-W-N-V. Uh, and I share lots of drawings, goofy drawings and some photos. And thank you so much for this opportunity to connect to your listeners because I think uh, the more I do these things, at first I'm like, oh, interview, I get very anxious about this. Um, but the more I think about it, it's such a great opportunity to be able to tell my story and forever, uh, you know, for whoever needs to hear it out there. And hopefully when they see me doing what I love, that, that it will encourage them to think that they can do it too. Well, it was definitely an amazing pleasure to have you. We're just so thankful for your time. Very grateful for you to join us today. Once again, I want to thank my guest, Fawn Virasunthorn, for joining me on today's show. We would love to hear from you, our valued listeners, about any suggestions for future guests or topics. Don't forget to subscribe to our program on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Asian Pacific Voices Radio is produced by Asian Culture and Media Alliance, a nonprofit that empowers the Asian Pacific American communities with a voice through media arts. If you would like to support our program, please visit AsianPacificVoicesRadio.com. I'm Arnold Chun. Please join me next week for another exciting and thought-provoking Asian Pacific Voices Radio show. Until then, take care, everyone. 